I'm sure by now you have seen the headlines. The next Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch 2, uh, is going to face a backwards compatibility problem. Don't presume that the Switch 2 will have backwards compatibility. Backwards compatibility, backwards compatibility, backwards compatibility isn't happening. I get it. I understand what's happening here. And we need to talk about this because I think the reports are wrong. And I also think the source of the reports, well, somebody who is very well respected here on YouTube and in the development community is overstating the actual issue. That being said, we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers. And if we can get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we'll be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. So the pin set, the steel book, the art book, the poster, and that lovely box. Guys, please hit that subscribe button and help us on our road to 100K. And let's get into this video. So Modern Vintage Gamer is at it again. He's been sort of beating the same drum now for a couple of years on backwards compatibility. Really since Nintendo put up this slide. This slide shows a number of interesting things. Most notably that Nintendo plans to carry some things forward to their next system. And the, the biggest thing here you obviously see is Nintendo accounts. There's a big a big emphasis on Nintendo accounts being carried forward, but this is more than just Nintendo accounts. You see, there's also that addition of value added services. Now, this likely refers to Nintendo Switch Online in addition to Nintendo account, right? And Modern Vintage Gamer, even in his video that he put out there, stated that, yeah, NSO, those games easily em emulated, they will be carried forward and that should continue to grow. But there's also this extra circle that often gets ignored called expanding Nintendo IP, which encapsulates the Nintendo Switch and its integrated hardware software and that next device, along with obviously other things. And you know, this includes the movies and the theme parks and all that stuff in between, of course, but these devices would heavily be part of that. Now, the interesting part, of course, is that a lot of us just assume there will be backwards compatibility. The 3DS had backwards compatibility to the DS, the Wii U to the Wii, and so on and so forth. It's actually been very common throughout Nintendo's history. Heck, the Wii could play GameCube games at least in the first couple of years before they ended up dropping that support. So, this isn't new. Nintendo's been down this road before, but the arguments Modern Vintage Gamer makes for why it's not possible now, well, here, I'll let him explain it himself. Let's assume that the new Nintendo Switch model has a new SoC, which is a generational leap over the current Tegra X1 that the system currently houses, and it has more power, more RAM, and possibly 4K visuals via modern reconstruction techniques, either via DLSS, FSR, or whatever. That totally makes sense, right? It's also irrelevant to this discussion about how much more powerful the new Nintendo hardware might be. For this discussion, the focus is purely on the SoC. Of course, we know that Nvidia developed the Tegra X1, which is using the old Maxwell architecture, and we expect that Nvidia will host the SoC of the new Nintendo Switch model, perhaps using Lovelace or Ampere. The actual SoC has been rumored, but that's not really that important. All we know is that it's a different architecture or binary incompatible with a Tegra X1, even though both are ARM64 based. This means Nintendo can focus the new SDK for all intents and purposes as an iteration of the current Switch SDK with specific changes for the new hardware. This makes sense because developers can easily migrate over to the newer hardware and have a very familiar SDK to work with. The GPU stack is rumored to run NVN2, an iteration of NVN that runs on the Switch. Although that particular leak as of the making of this video has no direct linkage to a new Nintendo Switch model. It's suggested that NVN2 will power the new Switch and it makes sense, but at this time, it's only speculation. So Nvidia powers the current Switch and Nvidia will power the next generation model. So backward compatibility should be easy, right? It's Nvidia, it's ARM based, it's a newer SoC, a call to draw a triangle on the screen on the Switch should be one to one backward compatible with drawing a triangle on screen on a newer piece of hardware, right? Well, the answer is no. In fact, this is where I've hit a bit of a junction trying to understand Nintendo's strategy. Let's talk about how software runs on the Switch. When you install a Switch game, it sits on top of the operating system known as Horizon OS. 
this physical game data itself comes built in with what's known as Nintendo Shared Object or NSO files. And this is not the same as the Nintendo Switch Online NSO that you may have heard of. These system objects that are brought in embeds a full Tegra X1 Maxwell GPU driver stack inside of every single Nintendo Switch game regardless of first or third party. Any shaders that are pre-compiled are also bundled with the game. And this is the root cause of the backward compatibility problem. A new SOC to power a new Switch hardware will simply not be binary compatible with this code, even though it's still on ARM64 architecture. Now you might be wondering, on my PC, I can simply update my GPU drivers when I get a new graphics card. So why is it possible to do it on my PC, but not possible to do it on a next generation piece of Nintendo hardware? Because the GPU driver stack is not statically bundled into the game, drivers are installed externally to the game as a dependency. And when Nvidia updates its GPU drivers, you know it simply works because its legacy around that is known as the Unified Driver Architecture or UDA. This simply means that your existing games that target Nvidia GPU driver stack will work on any updated drivers. And we know this to be true on the PC. On the Switch, however, UDA is mostly irrelevant because of its custom operating system, Horizon OS, and again, due to the embedded nature of the GPU driver stack. Now look, he dives deeper and deeper in his video. You guys can go watch it. I'll have a link down in the source section in the description. But there's some interesting points I want to bring up that can come from a guy named Zomble. Now, Zomble is somebody who is a frequent poster over on Fami Boards, and he had a lot to say about this situation, and I want to quote him. So these are his words, not mine, and then we'll get into my words. Uh, the first thing he said is that it's a bit of a clickbaity video that plays on people's anxieties, which I don't think is intentional. However, he does have a history of trolling people on Twitter. He also paints the situation as unique to the Switch. But literally, both the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One uses pre-compiled shaders in their biggest titles, including Sony first-party games. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series were able to engineer compatibility into the hardware, not just the software. This was also the solution Nintendo went with the Wii U, according to Iwata Ass when talking about backwards compatibility. I do want to also note that they basically included a Wii chip in the Wii U. I just, I want to point that out. That is a thing they did, but he's actually talking about something like that, except we wouldn't need the full Tegra X1 chip to make that work. Also, the way Wii U did it, we had to reboot into a different mode. That was obviously not ideal, but that's neither here nor there. That could have been figured out software-wise. Modern Vintage Gamer doesn't even actually give this as an option and also dismisses the idea that Switch 2 would be powerful enough to simply emulate Switch like Steam Deck does, even though... The T239, which is the rumored chip in the next system, is mo a more powerful system on a chip than the one used in the Steam Deck. There are other incorrect or misrepresented information in this video, like MVN2. It's just MVN. There is no 2. And to say there is no link to Nintendo hardware and that it's just speculation is clearly wrong. MVN itself was announced the same day as Switch, as an NVIDIA custom API for Switch hardware. It's only used to create Switch software, and I'm not even sure you can get legal access to it without Nintendo dev licenses. Furthermore, the only hardware it is built around is the T210, which is the Tegra X1 slash Arista, the T214, which is, again, the Tegra X1 plus Mariko, and the T239, which is the rumored chip for the next system, called Drake. Just a lot of public and known information is dismissed by him, so it's a bad video in my opinion because he either knows the information and dismisses it, or he doesn't research the information and only makes the problem seem more difficult than it is. Trust me, if your three to four year old smartphone can play Switch games, and they can, Drake isn't going to have a problem in software emulation, and NVIDIA slash Nintendo have the ability to hardware emulate Maxwell shaders if needed. Now, someone asked him regarding this very interesting Modern Vintage Gamer video on backwards compatibility potential struggles, what solutions from his list would pretty much ensure that we at least get automatic improvement on games with dynamic resolution and better frame rates? And 
this is where Zombo lists uh, some solutions that Modern Vintage Gamer listed and, well, that he came up with. Software emulation is one way. Making Drake shader compatible with Maxwell like PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series did with the RDNA te architecture to do with GCN. This is something he didn't talk about, but there is some hardware compatibilities in that uh, in, in those dev kits. Uh, next up is putting two Maxwell SM inside the system and allowing higher clocks and SSD the faster RAM slash CPU. He mentioned putting the entire Tegra X1 in, but you actually only need the Maxwell GPU cores, which aren't that big and are, you know, they're, they're, they're literally around, uh, 300, um, uh, million slash tray. I'm not exactly sure. This means I'm not going to pretend to understand the technical jargon, but apparently they're very tiny and could just be included as a subset to the chip itself, uh, the new chip. Placing the entire Tegua X1 SoC inside Drake, which is something he mentions, and then throwing away Drake and just allowing Mariko to run 50% faster. This doesn't fit any of the rumors, of course. This would be more like a you know, new Nintendo Switch situation, like a Switch Pro, where you're basically just running the Tegra X1 at stock, which is the same chip, so of course there would be backwards compatibility. Highly likely this is what they're going to do at this point. Maybe that's something they plan to do with OLED back in the day, but it, at this point, I doubt we're just going to see, oh, here's the Tegra X1 running at stock. It's just, it's just not something that I think Nintendo is really considering at this point. Now, he had a few other things he wanted to add, let's say... Um, he doesn't buy the backwards compatibility problem that was reignited by Modern Vintage Gamer. It's not really an issue. Uh, PS5 and Xbox consoles had to deal with games having pre-compiled shaders, uh, but both were able to solve this for the RDNA architecture, which is fundamentally different than what they were using before, uh, thanks to some compatibility work from AMD, Sony, and Microsoft. There's no reason to think that NVIDIA and Nintendo can't actually just do the same thing. And I will note, NVIDIA has a long track record of making... Uh, stuff compatible with their old hardware with their new hardware. So NVIDIA themselves has already done this just in the PC space on their own. So I don't know why they couldn't just do that with Nintendo. Uh, Drake is apparently a custom part and will have Ampere and or Maxwell architectures share about three-fourths of their instruction sets. And the CUDA cores are partly binary compatible. Patches are still required to push higher fidelity than Switch games were programmed for and to introduce DLSS. But if all you want to do is run dynamic resolution and maximize unlock frame rates, Drake can offer that to Switch games without patches. So look, what we learned from here is we actually have some potential specs for the Switch 2. Well, we're, I'm not going to dive into those right now. I feel like that's a video for a different day. This stuff has been debated and talked about to death uh, for a long time. You know, remember how he notes, hey, whatever this is, looks like it's more powerful than a Steam Deck. What are we talking about? Well, we'll get into that later because that's always really, really exciting stuff. And because it's been debated and talked about for so long, we have more um, concrete, it's still speculation, but uh, speculation based on information. Uh, that we could go over. So we'll do that at a different video in a different time. But what I want to focus on here is the fact that this problem that Switch has with, with backwards compatibility isn't unique to Switch. It is something that other systems had to deal with as well. And I think Modern Vintage Gamer dismisses the other systems uh, having to deal with this problem because he thinks the leap in power made up the difference so they could just straight up emulate but it ignores that these systems happen to offer some hardware solutions as well uh, to help with that. So while there is probably some emulation involved from a software perspective, there's also hardware patches in there enabling all of this. So they already thought about backwards compatibility while designing the hardware. And there's no reason that Nintendo couldn't do this. Like if it's true, all Nintendo needs to do is get the Maxwell uh, GPU cores uh, added to the die. They could easily do that, make the die just a smidge bigger, and there you go. You have exactly what you need. You could run on the old GPU cores, but the faster C CPU cores of the new chip. Use similar instruction sets. And next thing you know, you have better stuff going on. Now, this, in order to get the improved visuals, like if you want DLSS support, that kind of stuff will require a patch. Uh, that That's very notable that... When we're talking about just backwards compatibility, this just means playing Switch games as is or playing Switch games with the ability to unlock the frame rate and the dynamic resolution. So if you have a game like The Witcher 3 with dynamic resolution scaling, well, on the new chip, it could just run at its max resolution all the time and could run at a higher frame rate since the frame rate's unlocked, right? So that 
could be something that could be added. But if you want 4K textures uh, and actual improvements to the visuals, well, that's going to require patches and stuff like that. You can't avoid that. So it's not as if we, we get this new system and all of a sudden your copy of Tears of the Kingdom you buy on May 12th is going to run at 4K and look pretty out the box. It will require a patch in order for that to happen. But backwards compatibility isn't about necessarily taking advantage of all the new fancy dancy features of the new system it's just about being able to play the old games in the way we've been able to play them this whole time and then if, if developers want to release patches and want to take advantage of stuff they can so that is sort of where all of this uh stems from by the way this is not me trying to insult modern vintage gamer in any way he is an actual game developer he has worked on several games being brought over to switch he has used switch dev units he knows what he's talking about and he's quite knowledgeable and he hasn't only developed for switch but i think he's a little bit dismissive of some things uh, i know that we can't definitively prove that the mvm mentions for the new chip last year are nintendo but we also haven't seen mvn instruction set used in any other device to date it wasn't even used in the in nvidia shield and that was using the same technology and had well hey like Wii games, like Twilight Princess, were ported to it in HD, believe it or not, out in China. So, look, it's very clear that it's probably for Nintendo's custom chip. That news broke last year. We talked about it back then. I just think that we're in this situation where he is he he wants to put some skepticism out there because if the system doesn't have backwards compatibility, he wants to be able to be like, hey, I told you so. And if it does have backwards compatibility, he can point to, hey, I never said it couldn't have backwards compatibility. I just think it's dumb to assume it will. I don't actually think it's that dumb. If Nintendo's carrying forward Nintendo accounts, they're carrying forward Nintendo Switch Online, why wouldn't they just carry forward backwards compatibility? They have a lot of experience using backwards compatibility through various methods in the past. NVIDIA has a ton of experience making their hardware cross compatible. I just don't think this is going to end up being as big of a problem. It's not like they're, they're jumping from NVIDIA to AMD and that's going to suddenly change anything. Or going from ARM CPUs to Intel CPUs, right? Like they're still using ARM cpu cores they're still using nvidia technology while there is obviously work that would have to be done to make backwards compatibility work no one's arguing that i don't think it's nearly as complicated as he makes it out to be and i also think he's significantly undershooting what the power in a nintendo switch 2 will be um the fact that he starts off by saying by, by, by talking about how it wouldn't be powerful enough to emulate switch games Meanwhile, we've got some evidence that it would be more than powerful enough to emulate Switch games and yet still be at an affordable $350 to $400 price range. That's something we'll talk about in a future video. Uh, until then, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.